Yo, what up guys and girls? I wanna go through different sales objections that you get when you're selling lead generation. I have a huge list here that I'm gonna go over. I will help you to go over those objections so you can close more deals and make more money. If you don't already know who I am, my name is Levi. I run a lead generation agency and I also run a coaching company called Agents Velocity where we help people build a lead generation agency from zero to $10,000 a month in 92 days. And it's going pretty smoothly. Here's a picture of what we just did with Oliver. I have been in sales for seven to eight years i started out really young and i have trained a bunch of sales people in my whole lifetime and the biggest mistake that i see a lot of people do a lot of new sales guys they pitch their service they maybe ask for the sale and then the prospect tells them that yeah we have to think about it or yeah actually it might be better to do it next year q1 and then they basically give up they're like oh they don't want it i got an objection okay let's maybe follow up next year and the deal isn't closing at that point anymore you pitch your service you immediately ask for the sale this should be standard you should ask for the sale every single time when you pitch then you get an objection 95 percent of the time you get an objection this is just part of the sales process when a prospect tells you that yeah we have to think about it or no we don't want it that doesn't mean that they don't want it that just means that they don't it right now because they don't have enough information or they're not 100 confident on the solution you handle the objection and then immediately you ask for the sale again and then you probably get a new objection yeah so we have to think about it then you again handle that objection you close again and you just been through this loop until they buy or leave the call that's just how it should be done because if you give up immediately after each sales objection your closing rate is going to be super bad and your sales cycle is going to be super long so you won't be making a ton of money here I have a list of the most common objections that I've seen when selling lead generation. So first thing that you might hear from a prospect in a call is other agents provides the same service for cheaper. We actually have one agency who's offering to do this for $50 per booked call. So instead of you just saying like, fucking hell, that's a good price. This is what you want to say. Yeah, no doubt about that. But which one in your opinion is better option when buying a specialist service like this? A, the cheapest option in the market or B, the service provider who actually cares that you get exactly the service you need to fix your biggest problem. The cheap service provider, they can't really offer exact custom-made solutions for you because of their pricing. While on the other hand, the service provider who priced their service correctly is able to provide you the exact high quality service you need since it's taken into consideration when pricing the offer. John, let me ask you, in a situation like this, do you prefer to work in a quality result-oriented partnership or in a partnership that is a little bit here and there? Which one sounds better to you and then of course the prospect tells you in the quality and result oriented of course exactly and that's what we do at your agency name every time when we start a new partnership we give you a guarantee so because they are giving you a little bit of friction and you'll probably have a guarantee in your offer we give you a guarantee that you only pay for the qualified leads that we book you and we do this to ensure that our partner gets the best possible return on investment without having the risk of losing anything would it make sense to start generating some growth for company X and you close? And that's basically how you overcome the objection that someone else provides the service for cheaper. Because if they provide it for cheaper, they are not able to give as good of a service. They are not able to create as good of a lead list as you are. They won't have time to actually custom tailor the offer for them. They won't be able to afford good inbox managers and good hires in their team. So you just want to bring out the fact that this is actually a specialist service and this is probably the biggest bottleneck in your company and you don't want to go cheap here. Then when you're selling lead generation, of course, one of the biggest objections that there's going to be is what if you deliver us low quality leads? So John, really good question. So the main reason why cold email outreach is so powerful is the quality of the leads. Because compared to traditional cold calling, here when a prospect receives a cold message, it has huge friction. Basically, if they are not interested in an offer, they can just not reply to it. So if someone schedules a sales call for an offer via cold email, they have to be really interested on it the lead quality that you're gonna get on the calls is actually really good because of compared to that traditional cold calling someone cold calls you you don't really want to say no you're like ah okay let's do it but you're not probably interested in it also before we start working together we are going to map out the dream customer and build a client avatar based on their industry company size titles locations and tech they use all the calls that we deliver are first of all clearly interested in your offer and service and also they are the right type of company also since we are super confident the quality we provide we always offer all of our clients a 100% quality guarantee meaning that you only pay for the leads that we 
you see as qualified. So if we deliver you 15 calls and only 13 fit the criteria, you only pay for the 13. So would it make sense for us to start working together next Tuesday? So the third thing, this is something that you probably get a lot. And if you're not getting this, you need to jack up your prices. Because if you're not getting any price objections, you're selling it for too cheap. It needs to be high priced. So you should get this in every single sales call that you do. I completely agree, Mr. Prospect. All services and products are expensive and they could for sure be 50% cheaper also, in my opinion. But only if you think about it from the perspective of what does it cost instead of what does it get me? So John, let's put it this way. Do you think that if you today invest $7,500 in the growth of your business and it generates you on average $500,000 back in the next 12 months, in your opinion, is it cheap? Is it an okay price or is it a ridiculously expensive price? And of course, it's gonna be really cheap because if you pay $7,500 and you get $500,000 back, it's actually a pretty good price. Also, something that I like to use a lot when I get a pricing objection is something called an R ROI calculator. And basically what this is, this is a really simple Google Sheet calculator like you can see, which helps the prospect to understand the pricing model. So if you're selling something for paper appointment or paper call, so the prospect only pays you money when you deliver them a call. And usually if they tell you that the price is too high, they just don't see the ROI potential in your offer. They don't understand the pricing model fully. So what I like to do is I like to open this, I like to share my screen and I like to ask the prospect. So John, what is your average deal size? Let's say they sell SEO. Okay, John, what is the average SEO package price that you sell every month? Yeah, it's actually 2,500. Okay, 2,500. And don't mind, these are euros, but it works exactly the same in dollars. Okay, perfect. And how long does one customer stay with you on average? And then, uh, yeah, our uh, average customer stays with us for, let's say, five months. That would mean that one of your customers is worth $12,500 for you. And based on your sales team stats, how big your closing percentage is on average with cold outreach or outbound deals? Yeah, it's 17%. Okay, perfect. So 17%. Based on these numbers, if your average deal size is 2.5k and your lifetime value is 12.5k and your closing rate is 17%, one meeting on average is worth 2,125 euros for you. And since you are paying me 250 euros per meeting, the estimated ROI is going to be 8.5. So that's like a pretty good money multiplier. Let's say something super crazy happens and your closing rate is only 10%. Your sales guys forget how to close. And then let's say something happens and they only stay on average for four months instead of five months. One meeting is worth 1000 euros for you. So you're getting a 4x multiplier. That's still a pretty good multiplier. If you think that you give me a dollar, I'll give you four dollars every time. And this is with the worst case scenario. Let's say that your lifetime value is actually $20,000 because the prospects are actually better quality. And since the leads are more warmer, you close at a higher rate than normally, boom, that would mean that you would make 20x the money that you pay. So John, now that you see this calculator, you probably understand that there's really no way for you to lose money. Like you either make 20x your money, 8x your money, or maybe 4x your money. Now that you understand the pricing, what do you think about us starting next week? And again, you close. But yeah, this is how I usually like going over pricing objections because this is so visual, they actually understand like what you're talking about because you're showing it to them directly in their face. Then I have to talk with a co-founder, business partner or someone else. If you have watched my last video on how we run sales calls or how we do our sales process, you'd understand why we don't really get this a lot because we always make sure that all the decision makers are there before we pitch them anything. But if for some reason you find yourself in a situation where you're pitching to someone and then not all the decision makers are there, so they can't maybe make the decision or they are going to use that as sales objection. Usually if you get a sales objection, it probably isn't the actual thing. They are just trying to get an easy way out. So they probably still can make the decision, but they're just telling you that they can. So what do you have to do when someone tells you either talking to a co-founder or a business partner or someone else? The first thing is I 100% understand that, but think about this. What if your partner said no, would you still do it i've tried this few times and sometimes people actually say that yeah i would still do it then don't do anything else close immediately if they say no then you want to do this does your business partner know you're struggling with this yes do they want you to continue to struggle or do they want to see you succeed of course they want to see me succeed great then why would they be opposed to you moving forward yeah i guess they wouldn't be based on that okay perfect so would it sound fair enough if you started next month and then if they tell you that yeah but i don't think that i should make the decision without them well what do you think your partner's biggest problem would be with this this is usually like their biggest objection holding them back the problem you get here just use the rest of the objection handles that you have 
if you still can't move them forward based on that, this is what I like to do. John, let's actually talk best case and worst case scenarios. I'm sure your deepest, darkest fear is that I take your money, I fly to Bahamas, I block you out on all social medias, I block your phone number, I block your email, and I just sit by a pool and sip margaritas with your money. Or maybe you're afraid that what we do doesn't work and you don't actually scale your business and you just end up losing money. But with this model, there is literally no risk. If you're not satisfied with the service, we refund you everything, like actually everything. I usually like to have like a 100% money back guarantee and a satisfaction guarantee in my offers so they're actually able to get everything refunded to them because I'm super confident in our service delivery and it's perfect for situations like this. But hey John, look, we need to actually make a decision. I have a decision making framework that I always use. Do you actually think our service can help you with your lead generation problem? Yes. Do you want to work with us? Mm, yeah, probably. It would be great. Okay, perfect. So do you think if you work with us, you have a greater or lower likelihood of growing your business? Probably greater. Perfect. So let's get started next Monday. You meet close and if you can still move forward with them ask what is your main concern and try to dig really deeply do you have any case studies i can see so if you have a case study yeah of course what would you want to see in it so you could make a decision based on it and you basically ask this so you get more info on what is holding them back so you can focus on selling to the exact objection if there's over five minutes left on the call go over the case study just share your screen and go over your case study but if there's under five minutes left on the call you don't really want to start going over a case study because you're gonna just run out of time and it's gonna be a shitty sales call and again you don't want to send them a case study after the call because then they're just going to look at it and close it and go on with the day you want to actually have them sitting in a call so you can go over the case study explain it and then again close them and if they don't agree on having the meeting with you if they tell you like yeah just send the case study via email john we are actually trying to solve this problem for you you clearly are also wanting to solve so from my experience prospects who just want info over the email usually are not actually interested in our offer so to not waste you or, or my time are you actually trying to solve this problem or would you just prefer having some information on this and if they just tell you like yeah i'd actually just want to have some information okay thank you john for being honest i'll gladly link some other legion agencies who will send you proposals and calculations on this unfortunately we don't really do that because we are super problem solving oriented so if it isn't really a problem in your business you might want to move forward with someone else and this basically pulls you away from the prospect and either shakes them up and they're like fuck these guys are actually not fucking around I need to do what they told me or I'm not able to kind of see the pricing or get the case study or then it saves you from the hassle since they were never actually going to buy. If they're like, yeah, sure, link me other Legion agencies, they probably weren't going to buy from you. And if you don't have a case study, so John, uh, the process of building a lead generation machine like this with cold email, the assets and the execution is very similar across the board. We haven't really worked with a client who's exactly like you, but that's why I'm so hyped for you. Because the truth is that if you are the first to implement this process in your industry, you will have a significant advantage over your competition. So basically here you are taking a negative and turning into positive. We need to sell a large deal before we can work with you. So John, let me ask you a question. If we could help you shorten that sales cycle on deals in your current pipeline, wouldn't that make sense to move forward with us today? If you have a starting fee, just split it up in two or maybe three and then just give them some tips on how to shorten their sales cycle. We need to raise money before we can work with you. This is actually a big one if you work in the SaaS or tech space. So actually, John, some of our customers said the exact same thing. Truth is that fundraising is never the problem, it's attraction. There's a huge appetite for companies who are showing traction and growth. And there's always an endless amount of investors who are hungry for fantastic companies who have sold lead generation and conversion and who have strong case studies. So focusing on fundraising instead of building the business and validating the core assumptions is often a time waste and just leads to negative yield this is why we work with our customers to dial in the legion idle customer profile and offer as soon as possible then when they go out to raise growth capital they can easily do so the problem with you isn't raising money it's actually getting traction so you just get the money inside your business without even asking we need to bring this to our board great most of our customers said the same thing what we did for them was to give them an evaluation period. This way, you and your team feel comfortable working with us. So we can book an onboarding call and start building the systems and getting some calls. So it's easier for you and your board to evaluate if you want to move forward with this for the long term. So you basically just sell them your offer, give them like a 30 or 60 day money back guarantee or trial period, and then you just continue normally. This is actually a big one. We are going to try this on our own for now. We are going to try to do this ourselves. That is really annoying because you know that they won't be able to do it. So there are many strategies to building an outreach 
system and systematic lead generation process. Some are great, but some are pushed by folks with good intention, but no real track record and they just end up hurting customers. The key is not only knowing what to do, but knowing exactly what the order to execute the steps in. For example, if you start scaling outreach before properly dialing in your messaging and A-B testing it, you could end up wasting a ton of money and time. And also, John, if you target the campaigns improperly, then you could get a false negative when you are validating your product market fit and the offer. And that's of course just gonna be a huge time wasting for you. So when you work with us, we not only help you execute the steps, but we only help you execute the steps in the correct order. So this will give you the highest chance of success. So instead of you doing it yourself, shall we just start working on this together to make sure that you don't end up wasting any more time and money on this. And boom, again. My market is too small, will this work? This really depends on what kind of companies you work with. So the actually John, the smaller the better when you're starting since the competition is zero. I love working with companies who are in a small, unique markets with founders who have really specific domain experience that is useful in a small market. These founders often kill it. Don't let anyone tell you that your market is too small when you are starting. Facebook started with just Harvard. PayPal started with just eBay power sellers. So once you exhaust your small market, then you will pivot into an adjacent market and leverage your current case studies, learnings and profits from a first market. So let's get you going with your small market because they might be targeting only SaaS companies in Norway, for example, and that's a really small market. But what you do is you build them a really good campaign in Norway and then because they already see it work and they're like, oh shit, this is actually dope and they know that you can do it. Then you can tell them that, okay, maybe we should go for Sweden and Finland next. And then you just start expanding the campaign and every month when you start running out of leads, you just pitch them a new idea. Let's go for Denmark next. Let's go for Estonia next. Let's go to UK next. If you're getting the results, they won't have a single problem with you pitching new markets. I'm not sure if you can dedicate financial resources to this at this time. So John, if your business at the time is not spitting out profits, there are only two problems. One, your messaging is off. You can't get someone's attention and convince them to buy your product or service or two, your offer is off. Meaning the products or services are not resonating as well as you need them to be. We will help you solve both of these problems. So John, what do you think about starting next Monday? I'm ready to buy today. I just wanted to learn about what you guys do. This is also a pretty common one and it actually stinks a lot. John, yeah, I understand that's totally fine. We want to make sure that you are armed with enough information to make an informed decision. You're in this call for a reason. This reason could be that you're struggling with one of the particular problems we solve and you are in need of help. If that's the case, then take the chance and give us a shot to help you. Worst case, you learn what you don't know and get a clear perspective. You will only lose your time since we offer the best in class guarantee. Best case, you solve the heck out of the problem and you increase your momentum like never before and actually scale your company without putting any more time into it. Would it make sense now for us to start together, John? I don't have the bandwidth right now. So John, this is what a lot of our customers say before starting. However, once they start working with us, they often learn that the tasks they were prioritizing before they joined turned out to be a lower priority than they talk. You will also find nuggets that you can apply right away to your current efforts. When you're working with us, we'll help you make the best use of your time and get much more out of your current efforts. If you have someone who's managing marketing or sales, then you can have him in the calls with us and significantly increase their output. If you give it a shot, you will likely be pleasantly surprised at the amount of time and energy we will be able to save you. So again, taking a negative and solving basically an extra problem. Is there revenue-based pricing? Do you only get paid if you close deals? Let's say you pitch someone pay per call, like yeah, you pay $250 per call and they're like, oh, we would actually prefer the work on commission basis. And again, usually here the biggest thing is that they don't understand the pricing model or their sales process really fucking sucks and they know it or they don't have cash flow to pay it up front. So those are like some problems that you can't really fix, but if it's not the case, you should still go with this. Actually, John, we don't do revenue share pricing unless we own part of the business. The reason is because your success is heavily dependent on you and your team executing and putting in effort with the cost we book you. We can give you everything that you need and help you along the way, but we ultimately can't wake you up every morning and make sure that you execute. Our job is to put you in the position to succeed, and make sure that the calls we give you are the best possible connection you need to sell more for your offer. It can't get easier than this, but you still need to take the last step and bring the deals home that we book you. I'm selling into enterprise, can you still help? John, we actually love selling into enterprise. Personally, I'd rather sell a $500,000 deals to those who can actually afford it than pay 2K deals to those who struggle. The energy required and complexity is similar, but the payoff is drastically different. We help you flood your calendars with appointments using outbound prospecting, how to engage and filter the prospects using discovery calls, and how to close prospects in record time with strategic sales approach that is ethical, helpful, and pleasant for the prospect. So 
When your sales organization learns this approach, they will feel empowered and you will experience growth numbers like you have never seen before. You can 100% get your results in the price. Will you help me raise capital? This is actually a big one if you are also in startup or tech space. The funny thing is that if you have traction, you will have to show off investors with a stick. Raising money is not hard if you can prove a great economic case to qualified investors. We will help you set up your machine such that your investment makes sense to the right investors. We will even give you strategies on how to approach investors. In the beginning, the problem is likely not that you can't raise money. The problem is that you don't have traction. We will help you get that traction. We are doing a lot of inbound referral business right now is there value in this for me since i'm already doing all right without marketing yes of course if you're already getting a ton of traction without marketing that means your product and offer is stellar next thing we need to tackle is the predictability and outreach a well-oiled machine that predictably provides you qualified high ticket leads each month from the list of your dream clients we love working with folks who are already successful so these have been the most common lead generation agency objections that i've seen across the board go through these few times write few of your own variations down if you want to start or scale your lead generation agency from zero to ten thousand dollars a month 92 days go to agencyvelocity.io we write your cold emails we help you pick your niche we help you create your offer we script your landing page with you we train you in sales we do everything that you need have an amazing day thank you for your time and attention i hope i gave a good return on it see you later